My mother was the largest collector of Hollywood memorabilia in the world, and it began when the great studio systems, MGM, 20th Century Fox, etc., began to liquidate um, and be broken apart. Uh, Kirk Kerkorian purchased MGM Studios and then broke it up for its value in pieces, sold off the real estate, the back lots, and all of the artifacts, the costumes, the props, the sets, the riverboats, everything including the rose bushes. My mother single-handedly took it upon herself to try to save this stuff. She was kind of ridiculed, saying that she was just saving a bunch of junk. And my sister and I caught that infectious sort of passion. And, and we began helping her collect along the way. My sister, of course, probably less so than myself, I got very into it. Uh, I went to all the auctions with her at MGM and uh, watched this the greatest movies and costumes in the world being liquidated. Getting to how we get to a Star Wars collection is interesting because Carrie lands this part in this B science fiction film and goes to England to make this B movie. And uh, my mother she would send me along a lot of times to chaperone Carrie in different ways, kind of keep an eye on things. And so I visited her a couple of times during the processing of this. and. But the reports basically early on, before I even got there, were that she had no clue what was going on. I mean, to her, the sets were kind of cheesy. Half the stuff was missing. And so she really was left with a, a concern that this uh, might not be the film of her dreams. Some time goes by, because obviously it takes time to finish the special effects and things. But I get a call one day. She says, I'm going to go over to the tonight to the 20th Century Fox lot, and we're going to see a screening of Star Wars. Uh, would, will you be my, you know, accompany me? I'm kind of nervous. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. So we go over to 20th Century Fox, which is right down off of uh, Pico near Century City. And she's chain smoking in the parking lot. And she's like, man, this is like the end of my career. You know, I mean, I know I don't have like a giant career yet, but this could be it. I'm like, look, can we please go in? I mean, they're literally the movie's starting. Okay, fine. Now, the lights are already down. We come in in the dark. There's no seats left except the front row. We sit in the front row. Battle cruiser flies over, you know, and we had to literally lean our heads back because we were in the front row. And I looked over and I said, this is something special. Everybody roared through the movie and then at the end of the movie, we applaud. it was like this huge reaction like that, that I don't remember seeing maybe ever in a movie. Uh, now, the, the next day or two, we were going to go to Grauman's for the real opening. And I, I was standing at the front of the Grauman's Chinese Theater with Carrie we saw people camping out on the streets. It was revolutionary. I mean, it truly was. And here's something that's interesting that we uh, thought of at that moment. My mother was 19 years old when she made Singing in the Rain. And that was one of the most revolutionary slash classic musicals of all time. And Carrie was 19 when she made Star Wars, I think that's kind of an interesting parallel that the that the, the that our mother had programmed Carrie to be this this princess. Carrie is Princess Leia. They are the same. A lot of people think like George created this this princess, and he did obviously with the dialogue and everything. But words on a page don't mean much until somebody says it, because this leads us to the first artifact, which is Carrie's scripts that are here, and they're signed to her from George Lucas, and each inscription says something different. So the scripts were salvaged by my mother. Carrie saw no value in any of this stuff and had thrown the scripts away. My mother took the scripts out of the trash cans and sent them to George, who signed them to Carrie. And then she had them bound for Carrie. She used to get a lot of this stuff and she didn't want any of it. it, just meant nothing to her. So she would give a lot of it, throw it away in some cases, or uh, think it was important enough to give to my mother or to me. Uh, now she knew I had a firearms collection, so she gave me some of her weapons. So we ended up with some of the guns of hers. Uh, we ended up with uh, Medal of Yarman that we brought to you, which actually goes with the dress you have on display as well. The first thing that I collected from Star Wars, having nothing to do with Carrie, my mother, was I had salvaged her director's chair from the first Star Wars film. And the reason why, I've, I'd never really seen a European director's chair before. They're very different than American type of director's chair. So I had salvaged the chair. Subsequently, we found pictures of her sitting in it and other people, George, and everybody had one. Well, segue forward when we were doing uh, Revenge of the Jedi, 
that was filmed in the United States. So those sequences were shot out on the beach with the metal bikini scene. I tried to get the metal bikini. We couldn't get anybody to part with anything. And along the way, Carrie acquired things that kind of went with that. So we have a beautiful oil painting of Carrie in the metal bikini. It's spectacular and the artist gave it to Carrie. And we have other still pictures and things that were given and we had the script, but we just did not have the costume. So, but uh, I don't know, maybe a, a year or two ago, uh, it, there one of them came up for auction and I was able to buy that. So we recently acquired that. So we brought that along for the ride. And I also have a prototype lightsaber they made for her for the last film and it's got her name laser etched in it. And I believe that they were going to have a little different role for her, but she passed away before they were able to film the last film. So when you look at that artifact, you have to think to yourself, you know, what would have been? Was she gonna be the last Jedi? My mother collected for the people, not for herself. She had the artifacts so that other people could experience the history of the film. They could connect to the artifact. The artifact is the tangible. It's the thing that remains. It's the thing that was worn or touched by the person that may no longer be with us. So to me, anytime you can share these things with the public, that's the dream that my mother always had. So I'm merely carrying on the dream that is what we were infected with, that dream.